So most independent filmmakers, I would say, would probably lose money on their projects. What do you think is the reason? Is it the mindset? They're not doing the proper research on what the budget should be? The budget? Oh uh, yeah, you have to you have to you have to make sure like when you when you if you're doing a film for a million dollars, you can't use your friends. You have to make sure you use actors that's going to get you that money million dollars back. If you do a so when I was doing a, when I was doing films for twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or a thousand dollars, I use I use local actors who didn't have a name. But when I decided my first film that I actually got, which is a film called Black Coffee. Well, I actually got money from RLJ, uh, which is Bob Johnson's company. We didn't shoot that film for a lot of money, but I knew that they knew that I just can use those same actors because it would be a hard sale for BET or to TV One or whoever. So we needed to do, use name actors. So if you're going to do a film for $500,000 or even $100,000, you have to make sure that you, the most important thing for me was, or the most important thing for filmmakers, make sure that we are able to pay back our investors. That's very important. Now, if the investors know and, and feel that you can pay them back, they will invest. And then what you could do is you can form, form a partnership where they can continue to reinvest in your films. So again, you make, if you're making a film for, for, I mean for $100,000, make sure that you use at least two, two names at least two names that's going, at least going to get you that money back to you, so you can pay back your investors and also you can make some money. Yeah. Can you explain how named actors get you money back? So the way, the way it works is this. So if I'm like, I'm going to use, I'm going to use Black Coffee as an example. So and I'm going to tell you the budget and everything. So that movie was made for $120,000. So in that movie, we did like, so we had Darren Henson, we had uh, Gabriel Dennis, we had uh, Erica Hubbard, Lamar Walker, and Christian Cage. Those are our main five. And these are named actors. People know them. They, you, know, you may not know their name, but if you see their face, you know them. And they were BET friendly. Like BET, like you show those people to BET, they know them. So when you, when you, a movie like that was made for $120,000. When you sell it to BET, you may get two fifty dollars back. You know, you may get a little bit more back. You know, that's how, that's the way you're making your money is, for, you know, is television. You know, it's television now. Um, so that's how you, you know, you get a movie. And you have to do your research too. Now, if you're doing a horror film, you know, know the actors that are good with when it comes to horror films and know who's picking up horror films, whether it's uh, what networks are picking up the horror films and whether it's a, a romantic comedy, know which networks or which distribution companies are picking up uh, romantic comedies, know which actors that they like, go on their web, the different websites uh, with the different uh, distributors and see the movies that they're putting out and see the movies that are hot. So say for instance, and go to the different, uh, the different television shows and see what television shows are hot. And a lot of actors who are doing TV, they want to do feature films. You know, they, of, of course they do. So if you go on to, uh, if you see like, uh, you go to like a, 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 one of my favorite shows, like This Is Us, if you have a great script, you know, that in your, what you want to do is you want to contact the agent and, you know, tell them what the script is about. You want to make an offer to like, you know, I say for instance, one of the actors from This Is Us say, I want you, it's the lead role. So you know that that t a television show is hot now. Everyone loves This Is Us. By using one of those actors from This Is Us, you know, and you keeping the budget very low between 150, 200, depending, you know, you may want to do a, a, a partnership with, that, with those actors and say, okay, I want you to come in, I want you to be the lead, and I want you to be the producer as well. And as a producer, I'm going to give you some money up front, and then you want to make money on the back end once we sell it. So you use that, those actors' name in order to sell your project. So who's going to turn down, uh, like the Sterling Brown from This Is Us, who's going to turn down a movie with Sterling Brown in it because he's so hot right now, you know? Uh, so you, you go and you just do your research as far as what television shows are hot, and what television shows are hot, and then what you do is you reach out to those different actors who maybe not doing a lot of t uh, uh, feature films, and you know, and when they have a break from shooting, like a show like This Is Us or whatever show they're shooting, when they have a break from shooting from one of your sh those shows, they may have the time to shoot your feature film, but do a partnership with them. 
like uh, Gabrielle Dennis and I, you know, she just played Whitney Houston on the Barbara Brown story. Like when we did the movie, um, uh, My First Love, it was, a, it was a part of, she came on as an executive producer, you know, and uh, it was a, like a partnership. So you want to do a partnership with these different actors as well. How did you learn that type of partnership where you felt like you could ask a, a named actor or recognizable face to be an investor as well? Well, because actors are looking, they want to produce more. Most actors, if you talk to them, and if the, if the project, if the script is really good, and if they have the time, and if it makes sense for them, they would definitely take the time and read it. And if they like it, they would join on, and um, they would join on, and they would come on as a producer and as an actor, you know? Or you maybe may want to attach them to the project, and if you attach them to the project, that may can get you go out to investors and get the money from investors. Say, okay, I have such and such actor attached to this project. You know, maybe you can go to uh, a company like HBO, Showtime, whatever, and get maybe like a. I'm just tossing some companies' names out, uh, or Netflix or Amazon Prime, and get an, an MG, which is a minimum guarantee, and say, okay, I have this actor attached to it. To this project and you go to these companies and say can you give me a minimum guarantee to say that if we finish this project with this actor attached that this is the amount of money that you're going to give me for this film so what these what the uh a network or a television a network or a streaming uh, network like a netflix may do there are no promises or guarantees and what they may do is they will give you a letter at, at mg which is a minimum guarantee letter saying that based off the production value based off these actors or this actor, if you deliver this film to us, we'll give you a certain amount of money. And what you do is you take that letter, you take that letter to investors to say, okay, and you take that minimum guarantee letter, you take the attachment letter from that actor, and you can take that to like uh, um, investors and say, okay, I can make this movie with this actor and uh, Netflix or Amazon or Hulu said that once the film is finished, the production value is there, if this actor is on board and, is, and stars in this film, that they would give me such and such and such and such. And that's how, that's how we got my film Black Coffee made, because what happened was I called up uh, RLJ. I was like, I want to do this film. It was like, who do you have a test? I had a relationship with Gabriel Dennis. I had a relationship with uh, Lamar Rucker. And it's funny because I met Lamar Rucker at a film festival in New York a long time ago. I was like, we got to work together. So we exchanged numbers. It was years later that I reached out to him. I got an attachment letter from Gabriel Dennis, Darren Henson, Lamar Rucker, Christian Keys, and Erica Hubbard. And Erica Hubbard is someone I've been knowing for a long time. So once I got that attachment letter from them, uh, I took it, took those, that attachment letter, I sent it to RLJ Entertainment. And within 24 hours, less than 24 hours, they say, okay, we want to make this project because they had actors that are attached to it. So if you get that attachment letters from uh, the actors plus the distribution company, you go to investors and say, okay, you know, this is how much money. So say for instance, if they say they're gonna give you $500,000 back based off this actor, you go, to the, the, you go to the investor, you say, okay, I'm going to make this movie for 350,000. I need 350,000 to make this movie. So you make the movie for 350,000, you take it to the network, that's going to give you five hundred thousand dollars for the film. Now you just made a hundred and fifty thousand dollar profit. So now you can pay back your investors, and you can pay back you can pay them back with a, with a return on the investment. Yeah. And and that was your fourth film that you made. That was uh, that was film number I think four or five. Black coffee. Black coffee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was that about? So black coffee was about a, a story about a guy who he gets fired from his job. And uh, he falls for this, this young lady who's an attorney and who encourages him to go in business for himself. You know, and so now, I mean, it played on BET for like four years oh, wow. and it played on, uh, now it's on Bounce. And so again, I own the rights to like, also you make sure that you, you own the rights to your content. That's very important. Based off owning the rights to your content, you can always get paid off your content. If you don't own a rights to your content, someone else is getting paid, paid off your content. So don't sell your films to distributors. Never sell it. You, what you do is you license it. When you license it, do a three-year deal. You know, sometimes they're going to ask for a 25-year deal. Sometimes they're going to ask for a seven-year deal. Do it three years. 
three year deals. And don't ever sell your content. Uh, mm -hmm. don't, don't sell the content. So what's the science behind three years? Because then if they want to renew it, you can do it, you can renegotiate at a higher rate? Yeah, well, the science between the three years is that if you got three years, you know, so within that three years, so many people have watched it and it probably would, would lose its value unless like somebody from the, that film win an Oscar, you know? So um, within three years is that, you know, they can always, you know, you can, you, you, you can take that film within three years and then you can resell it and continue to make money off of it. So you talk about seven years, they go, they, that's like they're pipping your film within seven years and you probably would never see another dime, but that upfront money. Uh, so you may so within three years you can get that film back within three years and you can resell it again. Oh, interesting. Or not resell it, but relicense it. Yeah. So yeah, don't ever sell your, your content. Control your your masters. Control your content. Just license your projects out.